Hey everybody! In today's video, I am going to explore a product that is brand new to me. I'm always looking for new water soluble mediums because you know I love watercolor so much. So I'll be trying out these pencils today. And while I color what's remaining on this little cat, I thought the rest of the cat would be too long for a video. This is a long video already. But while I show you how I colored the rest of him by coloring his head and the little bird, I'll talk to you about what makes this medium unique. Now I'm using a water brush today, which is not typical for me. I usually use my beloved. Escoda Versatile Travel Brushes or watercolor. But when I'm using a medium that isn't actually watercolor, in this case, this is a water soluble graphite product, I don't use my watercolor brushes. That's not from anything that I know, that I know harm will come to my um, lovely brushes, but I just don't feel good about putting ink or other mediums onto those brushes. Now, when I use a water brush, though, I rarely put water in the barrel unless I'm doing a very water heavy technique. If you've seen any of my watercolor videos, you know that I really control my water. I almost paint with a dry brush, and you'll see me when I'm painting this, I start with a dark good bit of pigment and then I wipe both pigment and water off my brush to blend the color out into the lightest form that I have it in on whatever I'm painting. So you'll see me wipe it on my stamp chamois and on my paper and just get it drier and drier with less and less pigment and that's how I get a smooth blend. Now what surprised me about this medium, so these are Derwent pencils and they are called graphitint and what they are is a water soluble graphite pencil and I love water soluble graphite. I'm a huge fan of Viarco Art Graph water soluble graphite which is just the pure graphite with that shimmery silver look just like you get from a pencil. But what's interesting about these is they are tinted. And as I experimented with these before coloring this little adorable Laurel Birch cat, is that they, they were not what I expected at all. So whenever you combine a color with graphite, it tends to gray it out naturally because the product itself is gray and shimmery. And it also has a natural lightness to it. So you can only get a pencil so dark and combining graphite with these pigments I thought would result in a much duller color than I ended up getting. And I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a bird tweeting outside my window right when I started coloring this bird. So that's kind of funny. I have the windows open today because it's beautiful. But these surprised me because I could get much brighter color than I thought I would ever get with a graphite product. I will link to the Viarco colored graphite products that I have used as well as what I'm using here in the, the video, but those are naturally uh, more earth toned, more subtle pigments. So Derwent has surprised me once again with a product that is not something I thought a graphite product could be. Now, when you are using these in traditional watercolor, which I have done, as a matter of fact, I did it today. I went out in my backyard and I did a little bit of sketching. When you use these pencils on the paper to compose your watercolor sketch, they are much more what I expected. When they lay down color directly from the pencil, they are subtler colors, less bright, less saturated. And then as soon as you activate them with water, that's where the color starts to pop out. So for plain air watercolor sketching, these are definitely going to be something that I bring with me 
when I travel. There are sets of 6 and 12 and 24. And I could see replacing traditional watercolor pencils with these because I like the sort of more neutral look that you get when you just do a sketch with them. And then you can selectively make colors pop by activating them with water. Now you're only going to get that pop the first time that you activate them. And this is sort of similar to traditional watercolor pencils. You can only get so much solubility out of them that, that first time, and then they're sort of set. But these are extremely blendable, as you can see, where I've shaded the blue with the purple on this cat, and then also on the bird, I used purple. And here I'm shading with the black, which is surprisingly dark, again, for a graphite pencil that is about, in my mind, similar to about an 8B just regular pencil. If you pick the pigment up directly from the pencil as I'm doing here, you can get it quite surprisingly dark. Um, obviously, you're not going to get darks as dark as you would get from watercolor pigments. But it just, I mean, I don't know how many ways to say that it surprised me that I could get both this amount of color and the shadows that I got with the graphite. And to me, there's something very pleasing about working with graphite. There is the subtle shimmer. There's also the fact that it doesn't interfere with the colors that you're using because it's pretty neutral. And it has a softness about it that you know from pencils that makes it easy to blend. Now, as for the composition of this cat, I love this stamp. I got this stamp as a gift. And Laurel Birch's images are, I mean, completely irresistible. And so what I wanted to do was make a blue cat, of course, because that's who I am. And as is my custom, I wanted the shadows to be purple or violet. That's very harmonious. And then I, for my red bird, which as you can see, it's not a bright, bright red, but it's pretty darn bright for graphite. I wanted a little bit of the colors from the cat in the bird. And so I used that yellow green as for some of the details. Look how cute that is. And then I also shaded with purple again to bring those colors from the cat into the bird. And while they're very different, make the whole sort of pleasing and related in color family. Now, because this is a wood stamp, you can see the stamp up in the right corner. Oh, hello, Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Maddie feels the need to be on screen a lot lately. I'm not really sure what that's about, but there's my little visitor. But because it is a wood stamp, and I am using cold press watercolor paper from Fabriano, my favorite, Artistico Extra White, which I will link you to below. That means that the impression is not exactly perfect from just stamping a wood stamp, which I'm very out of practice at doing because I do everything in the misty. Oh, Maddie, round two. But that means that the ink isn't maybe perfect everywhere around this design. And because Laurel's image is so modern and clean and graphic, I wanted to go back with this fine point Sharpie and outline where the black ink was on my image. Now, obviously, if I had stamped, if this was a cling stamp, which I will link you to below, this image does come in cling, I would have left the image in my Misty, colored the image, and then over stamped it again with a dark black ink like Versa Fine Claire. I stamped this to start with in. Stuart Superior India ink. But this just makes her fun little Zentangle elements pop out. And I thought that would be a nice finishing touch, even if my hand isn't as good at creating 
clean lines as her design is. What's fun about this image is it's easy to make it look 3D. It's sort of a round cat. And so just by going around the edges and leaving the center light, I can make him look sort of puffy and round like he looks to me in the original image. And also he's very easy to outline because there are very simple forms in the stamp image. Just a couple curves, a couple straight lines, and you have your kitty. So I really enjoyed these pencils. They might be new to you too, in which case I strongly recommend giving them a try because it surprised me, honestly, how bright and pretty they are and how easy they are to work with. So I can add some new pencils to my <laughs> already extensive pencil collection and maybe you can too. So here is the finished card with my Zentangly little cat. And I appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for watching.